Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a collab with Molly Westbrook so make sure to go over to her channel after this video and watch our collab which is a three-way collab along with Summer Valentine. So after this go and check out Molly's video. Today we're talking about Kyron Richard Horman who was born on the 9th of September 2000 in Portland, Oregon, to parents Desiree Young and Kane Horman. Now they were divorced but on good terms and Kane was in a new relationship with another woman named Terry Moulton who he would later marry and have a child with. Desiree and Kane had shared custody of Kyron until 2004 when um, Desiree suffered kidney failure and so Kane took full custody of Kyron from then because Desiree was too ill to do so at the time. From then Kyron lived with his father and stepmother Terry Morton and they lived a normal life and later welcomed a half-sister in 2008. Life and all counts seemed to be fine for the Holman family and Kyron started at Skyline Elementary School. However, this normal life would be shattered on the 4th of June 2010 when Kyron disappeared from school and was never seen again. On the morning of his disappearance, Terry took Kyron to his school's science fair where Kyron showed his presentation on tree frogs. And at 8.45am, Terry claimed she saw Kyron for the last time walking towards his classroom as she was leaving the school. However, as there was no CCTV cameras at the school at this time, there was no footage of Terry even leaving the school. And some witnesses actually claim that they saw Kyron leaving the school with Terry, however, there's nothing else to back this up. According to Terry, after leaving Skyline Elementary School, she went to run errands for the rest of the morning, going to buy some medicine for her daughter Kiara, who had an earache that day. She went to two Fred Meyer grocery stores to find the medicine, as the first one didn't have it, and she was seen on CCTV at both of these stores. After this, at around 10, 10 a.m., Terry apparently drove around for one and a half hours to soothe Kiara to sleep after she'd given her the medicine. It is unknown exactly what she did in this time and where exactly she went, which is why suspicions were raised later on when they found out that Kyron had gone missing. So once Terry had finished her drive, she went to the gym and was recorded entering at 11.39 a.m. Leaving Kiara in the on-site daycare. She was at the gym for 40 minutes after which they left and she went home where at 1.21 p.m. Terry would upload the now infamous pictures of Kyron at his um, school science fair. It's unclear what Terry did for the rest of the day but at some point Kane came home and at 3.30 the whole family went to collect. Kyron from the bus stop. Now when they got to the bus stop the bus driver informed them that Kyron had never been on the bus. So the school was immediately called and they revealed that Kyron had not been marked there at all that day. He'd been marked absent and had not attended any classes and the school did not notify anyone from Kyron's family which they later said is because they had it down that Kyron had a doctor's appointment that day. I'm not sure if it was confusion or not, but Terry says that it was for a different day, but the school said. And the secretary immediately called the police to report Kyron missing. After police received the report of a missing child, they immediately jumped into action and a message was sent out to all families in the district that Kyron went missing and extensive searches for him began. Initially, police focused on a two mile radius around Skyline Elementary and also around Suave Island. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, I apologise. Although police did not disclose their reasoning for this at first. It was later revealed that Terry's phone pinged off the tower there. However, the road she drove 
drove down would have been within the radius of the tower. Police questioned everyone at the school and continued searches, announcing that the National Guard and FBI were involved in the search. And it subsequently became the largest in Oregon history, with over 1,300 people involved and a $25,000 reward, which would later be raised to $50,000, but no sign of Chiron was ever found. So the family did not initially talk to the media, which raised the public suspicions that the family was hiding something or they were involved. However, they did eventually release a statement, but this would not be the last of the suspicions surrounding the family's involvement in Kyron's disappearance. In fact, the press conference only heightened suspicions towards Terry. During the press conference, people noticed that Terry's body language just seemed off and that further cast a shadow of doubt over Terry, but it would not be the last. So in late June, Kane Horman moved out of the house with Kiara and it was later revealed that the reason he'd moved out is because Terry had allegedly hired a landscaper to kill him around six months before Kyron's disappearance. Now, police were dead set on proving that Terry had something to do with this, I think. And so they attempted to get Terry to confess to something. They sent a landscaper to Terry's house wearing a wire and got him to demand $10,000 in the hopes that Terry would, I don't know, make herself look guilty about hiring him to kill Kane. But instead, Terry ran and called the police. Despite there being no evidence that Terry had actually hired the landscaper to kill him, Kane took out a restraining order against Terry and said he believed that Terry was responsible for the disappearance of Kyron. This is further solidified because Terry failed two polygraph tests during this time. Whether you trust in polygraph tests or not, it does look bad. Um, Terry's friends were also subpoenaed to give statements about the case. In August 2010, police appealed for anyone to come forward who may have seen an unidentified individual in Terry's truck on the 4th of June as two witnesses claimed to have seen someone else in her truck and flyers were released but nothing ever came of this appeal. Police seemed to believe that it was one of Terry's friends that was in the truck and that for some reason her friend helped her kidnap Kyron. So the drama surrounding this case would not stop there. In 2012, Desiree Young, Kyron's mum, filed a lawsuit against Terry in an attempt to prove that she has something to do with Kyron's disappearance and sought $10 million from Terry. However, she later dropped the case because she realised that it might interfere with the police's efforts in looking for Kyron. No one has ever been formally named as a suspect in this case and it is still unknown what happened on that day when Kyron went missing. So that is the case of Kyron Horman. I'd love to hear your opinions on what people think happened to Kyron because I personally, um, I have no idea. I think the media and the police spent so much time looking at Terry that they could possibly have missed a lot of things, like a lot of things, because they spent so much time searching places Terry had been and etc. And despite all of the crazy things that could point to Terry's involvement, nothing Nothing solid was found and she was never named like an official suspect. She was never officially arrested or anything like that. 
I've left a few things out of this case that just didn't have any bearing on on Kyron going missing at all, such as Terry started a new relationship like around the time Kyron went missing. But I think I've covered all the important information regarding Kyron's disappearance. And it's important to remember that despite all of the drama that at the end of the day there's still a missing child in the middle of all this and he really needs to be found. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to go check out my collab with Summer Valentine and Molly on Molly's channel. Molly, I'll have it linked in the description. Goodbye.